you know, a lot of times I vote for candidates that don't win or, or platforms that don't win. And it's disheartening. But I know that even time I say, like, man, I ain't doing it no more. No, I do, because it's still important. And with some of these city elections, you'll find out that the turnout was like 1%. <laughs> yeah, it's insignificant. Yeah, and when I hear that, I go, don't you people dare get on social media and, and whine and complain about what's and going write on. Write your essay yeah. and, and make your memes and things like yeah, that, because yeah. that, 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 that is so ineffective. Or, the, or, those, or those protests. All that does is make you yeah. feel better for the moment. Yep, that's what it is, but a band-aid. It doesn't, doesn't actually do anything. You have to get out and you have to do something. <laughs> Now, we do want to get a little serious, and this has been the big thing that's been going out there, Chad, in the sociopolitical uh, sphere right now, in the sociopolitical zeitgeist, and that is, of course, the overturning of uh, Roe v. Wade by the Supreme uh, Court, uh, which was originally upheld um, for decades. 50 years. Fif- yeah. 50 years. That's right. Yeah, it's uh, 1973. 19, yeah, 1973, I think, so nearly 50 years. Um, you know, I... I kind of want to go have everyone speak their their minds on on, on the issue, which is again, it's it's a it's it's very serious. It's extraordinarily divisive. It has been for fifty years in this country. But I can only speak for myself, and I want Martin to speak to himself, and I want Ivani to speak for himself. You know, for, in, in regards to just um, you know the subject of of, of of abortion, my whole way of thinking, and I you know I've I've had to you know really look inward and just realize like. Listen, I'm not a woman. <laughs> I know that, uh, you know, uh, distinctly. And so I just feel like, you know, I'm, I'm not a woman. And I feel like women should have autonomy over their, their bodies. It should be, you know, their decision. The end should be up to them. What well, That's how I've always felt. And, this, you know, they have, you know, men try to say what, how women should control their bodies. I don't think that's fair exactly. So, you know, I, I, it's complicated, but I, I would say I'm, 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 I'm pro-choice, but... You know, and I want to get in the history of this, of course. But I want Martin and Vanny to speak well, your minds on the decision. Well, out of that, this yeah. is, it, it's, it's something that mostly affects women. True. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it affects men as well. Mm-hmm. It affects families. It's, uh, it's the kind of thing where you have to wonder, like, why is there even a debate about this? Yeah. Because abortion is like gay marriage. If you're against it, then don't get one. If you're against gay marriage, don't marry someone in the same sex. Yeah. If you're mm-hmm. against abortion, don't have one. Mm-hmm. What, what, why are you that concerned about what's happening with somebody else? And I've always said with this with abortion, um, for these people who are uh, you know, uh, pro, uh, pro-life, which is a, a complete lie, yeah. uh, but anti-abortion, if that's the case, why are there any orphanages operable? Like, like if, if it's all about you caring about the kids and saying, like, hey, those kids could be adopted, why isn't every orphanage empty? And I talked to a guy. He's, mm-hmm. He was anti-abortion. He was a mm-hmm. friend. We were drinking. He's pro-life. Yeah. yeah, he's pro-life. And he was like, well, it's not that easy to adopt kids from the abortions. There's people who've tried and they've had trouble. And I was like, yeah, but how is it going to be easier to adopt a newborn than one that's already there? Yeah. And even, even talked to this friend. He was in the process of having another biological child. Mm-hmm. So the, the hypocrisy is rampant yeah. on yeah. all that. We're, we're, it, but it's not even, re- this, this whole issue isn't even really about that. Yeah. But I'm, uh, it's, Manny, it's about control. Yeah. But no, no, yeah, that, that's, that's Vanny's literally opinion. what it is. It is 100% about control. And I, I've, I've had a couple of days to kind of even think about this too. And I somewhere I was at work when and I got, we got the email of like, hey, this is happening because uh, I work in human resources. So of course that has implications for medical benefits and things like that. But like on that personal level, it's exactly what that. This is Friday was one of like the darkest days I think of like our lifetimes um, because it was something that was about women's health, women's choice, and that was taken away from due to like conservative values and under the guise of it's about the the child's uh, what about the child's you know life? What about them? And we we have no infrastructure in place I think to exactly that point. We don't have uh, a robust healthcare system that can support things like that. We don't have. Uh, a, an amazing healthcare system for uh, or orphanages uh, for this too, or making it where it is easy to adopt. This is just designed to hurt. Anybody is surprised and shocked. Mm-hmm. I go, where where have you been? Yeah. I mean, I'm not bowled over by it because even in the last few years, yes, uh, it's been it's it's been said to your face. Mm-hmm. Trump said it to your face. 
the groundwork yeah. was laid. Yes. Right. Even before him. It, oh, 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 oh. For before decades him. before him. Before, yeah. Decades before him. Uh, this is this has been in the works for a while. Yeah. But he was he was the one to say it right to your face. Yeah. This is what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, yep. back when Mitch McConnell wouldn't let Obama appoint uh, Supreme Court justices. Merrick Garland. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, I, I, and not that it wasn't in work in the works before that. But that was the first time it's like, really, this is in your face. Mm-hmm. And you said, well, that's not right. But then you went on back to what you were doing. That's right. And then Complacency. Yes. Apathy. Yeah. And then Trump said, this is what I'm going to do. And you said, well, he's, I don't like Hillary, so I'll vote for him anyway. My dad was 100% that. Yes. Yes. Uh, because you went, ah, lesser two evils. And it's like, did you really not really look at what was at stake here? Because right. after what... Mitch McConnell didn't let Obama appoint another Supreme Court justice. It, I, I, I guess I'm say about that too. Um, no, please, please feel free. Well, well, well actually, look, just one thing before, and I'm gonna let you go because you raise a great point about Hillary Clinton, and Donald Trump, and mm-hmm. it's you know uh, they're they're the same. It's that false equivalency, mm-hmm. yep. which has been a problem, and it's yeah. been put out there by not only just our political social culture, but also pop culture as well. I mean, we've oh, all yeah. seen this image. We've all seen this meme of the of the douche versus the toot sandwich, uh, Honestly, sandwich the by douche. South Park. I was a big South Park fan, yeah. and that turned me off so much. I've not watched it since. Yeah, I, I don't have the stomach for it. I can see that. And that yeah. one. That one's I think all the way from two thousand four, possibly. I forget what episode this is. Well, it might have been a more recent one. No, but, no, no, no. It yeah. was it was during the um, was the uh, the Clinton and and, and Trump, Trump election. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. I just wanted to be sure. Um, Because the thing is, I saw the clip, it was from 2004. It might have been just like, South Park did weird shit, they went back in the past. I mean, they they might have referenced it way early and then brought it back. Yeah, which I think, that's exactly what they did. They did, they did a sequel episode, that's what it was. But, But that's the thing, like, you put this out there and you get people thinking, oh, no matter who I vote for, it's just gonna be the same. And that's not true. You may not like those people, you may not like Hillary Clinton, but she wouldn't have appointed three conservative justices. No, that's the thing. But keep going what you're saying. Well. Part of this goes back to uh, Kennedy versus Nixon, mm. where suddenly the presidential uh, election became about a personality con- yeah. a, yep. a, a contest. Yeah, good point. Uh, it really came through with Gore versus Bush, mm-hmm. where <laughs> it was the whole, well, Gore is too smart. Yep. <laughs> like that's a bad thing, yeah. Right. But Bush is somebody point. I could have a beer with. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, I got a lot of guys I could have a beer with. Yeah. I would not let them be president. No. Right. No. But that was the first time that, I mean, that may not the first time, but that's when it really became the thing where everybody was accepting, like, yes, it's all about personality. Once Trump got elected, all of the quiet things would start being said out loud. Yeah. But then yeah. people also were thinking, like, the truly heinous stuff. I mean, like, nobody in their right mind is going to raid the Capitol, and then it happens. Or they're, like, they're not going to overturn Roe v. Wade. Like, I think they, the expectation was once the leak came out and the public outcry happened, that that was going to be enough. And they were saying, like, no, people are going to be super mad about because it's no secret that the majority of Americans support uh, abortions. Like, it is, it's not, like, a big secret or it's not anything like that, but they still did it anyway. Yeah. yeah. See, what was secret, but not really secret, was yeah. that the people in government who are in charge that mm-hmm. they care what the American people think because they don't yeah mm-hmm. and they haven't for a while yeah right and and, and now you and now you know there's been people who have been telling you this yeah. um, and you and but there's always a feeling like well I can make jokes about this and I can of laugh course. about it and insults and memes but uh <laughs> you know somebody's working on it somebody's gonna take care of it nobody's gonna let the the heinous shit actually happen right and, and that there is no person that, like, yeah. that's kind of up to you. And you haven't right. been doing that. Uh, I almost, you know, Corey likes to go on the, on the political rants. Mm-hmm. Sure. And get pretty loud and fiery about it. Yeah. Um, I, I don't really like doing that so much. Even with this, I, I can say I, I don't like, I mean, it's good for, you know, releasing whatever poison. Getting I think it's just good yeah. to talk about. It's good yeah. to talk about, but here's why I don't like talking about it. Because this has happened, and people are upset, yeah. and, and you're mad, and you're posting on Twitter, and you're posting on Facebook, and you're talking to anybody who, who, uh, who will listen, and you've had a couple days to do that. Now, what are you gonna do about it? Exactly. Well, I mean, that's the next yeah, step. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like, we do this show, and we have a platform where we can talk about these things, and you can nod and agree with us, and say, like, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned it. But if there's no action, 
then it doesn't mean a goddamn thing. And I feel so often we talk about this stuff, and yeah, so what happened? And you know, I, I, I throw the mirror back at us. What are we doing? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I do donate. I've been donating to Planned Parenthood for mm -hmm. a while. This, is, this has always been an important issue to me. Uh, I will say that during Trump, uh, the heat fell on undocumented immigrants. Mm -hmm. uh, and many who are my close friends and almost family so I started to switch my donations, but I can't cover every front. No, of course. Yeah. So now, so now here this is, and yeah, I'll go back to supporting the ACLU and mm -hmm. whoever else. Um, but people have to actually get out and do things. You have to, yeah, yeah. You, you got to get involved. Mm -hmm. Like you, mm -hmm. you can't sit back and go like, I can't believe this. I'm mad. Let me write something, and then feel like, well. Oh, I argued with somebody <laughs> yeah. uh, on, on Facebook. Like, did my duty. Yeah, I did my right. duty. No, that's not doing your duty. It's actually either campaigning or actually running for office, like getting involved in the politics, because yeah. these are what affect you. It's, right. it's, I mean, there's so much here in America that is designed to distract you. Mm -hmm. And my God, it's so easy to fall for all of it. This, this, this land is supposed to be about freedom and liberty yeah it's like to say yeah. liberty mm -hmm. so how is it that the word liberal uh, with the same base root as liberty is seen as a bad word that that you could spit that word out you're a liberal a libtard wait so i'm for freedom and you're in the land of the free but you're against that you, you, you see, like the idea that you could that's allow that to just continue to be mm -hmm. like, oh, that's the status quo. Yes, mm -hmm. these that's these people. That's this side. The, the way the politics are handled now, like the sports teams. Yeah, and it's the tribalism, exactly, which is why I always said it's the tribalism. Yeah, it's the we won, it's the they lost. We're all the we. Mm -hmm. We should all be the we. Yeah. 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 Okay. We got difference of we disagree opinion. on some things, of course. Sure. Yeah. But it we it. it not only should it be like, hey, there's uh, checks and balances, and you get some and I get some. It's not a zero-sum game. But that's the way things work best for all of us. Like, it's not mm -hmm. like, yeah, sure, you might get your way most of the time. But if you push it too far, there's going to be pushback. Yep. That's what and, we've seen and, and, time and time again. It, it's not, it's not going to work. It's, it's, it's ultimately not going to work. I am not tooting my own horn. Not at all. Because I, I vote in every election. I don't mean every presidential election, every uh, midterm election. I mean city elections. Yeah, city elections. Those, th those are the ones you probably blow off, and they're the ones that affect you the most. Yep, I make right. sure I get out for every one. And, you know, a lot of times I vote for candidates that don't win or, or platforms that don't win. And it's disheartening. But I know that even time I say, like, man, I ain't doing it no more. No, I do. Because it's still important. And with some of these city elections, you'll find out that the turnout was like 1%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's insignificant. Yeah. And when I hear that, I go, don't you people dare get on social media and, and whine and complain about what's and going write on. Write your essay yeah. and, and make your memes and things like yeah, that. Because yeah. that, 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 that is so ineffective. Or, the, or, those, or those protests. All it does is make you yeah. feel better for the moment. Yep. That's what it is. But Band -Aid. It, doesn't, it doesn't actually do anything. You have to get out. You have to do something. For people don't know, you know, the Roe v. Wade decision, the, the 50 years that has been in, you know, uh, been in action, it was all, didn't, it didn't have a good foundation to begin with. Mm -hmm. That was the problem. That's why people like Alito and people like, you know, Clarence Thomas exploited this situation because mm -hmm. they were mm -hmm. waiting for this when they, when, when they had that majority. Yeah. But those don't know, Roe's base argument is that the right to abortion was based on the privacy of a woman with her doctor and was not a violation of equal protections guaranteed by the Constitution. That's what they argued, mm -hmm. which made it unconstitutional. The court reasoned that outlawing abortions would infringe on a pregnant woman's right to privacy. It's about the doctor's freedom to practice. It wasn't woman-centered. It was physician-centered. And that's when they said, this isn't about a woman's liberty. It was about her privacy. And that's what they argued, and that's why they were able to overturn it, why they were able to put it back in, uh, to the states. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. this whole thing happened right there. And that's the way it's been before. Matter of fact, some notable justices, who I'm going to bring up in a second, because this is a part of her legacy now, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, she even felt that way. Mm -hmm. She agreed with the end result of Roe v. Wade, she wanted to maintain it, but she always said, she always warned, something like, this could be exploited mm -hmm. later on in the future. And she was worried about this for decades. No, but no action was taken on it. Yeah. Yeah. No action was taken on it. 
Um, and I want to kind of go into the other things. Like, that was the first thing. The foundation of Roe v. Wade was already not great. But, as I said before, in regards to, I mean, this is, I mean, it goes back even farther than them. But, you know, the 2016 election between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. A lot of people didn't like either of them. You had some people like, oh, they're, they're, they're both the same, the worst. And it's like, I'm sorry, that's false equivalency. You yeah. cannot not like Hillary Clinton on a personal level. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of trouble things about her past, yes. and she's a hypocrite yeah. yes. and, and all sorts yes. of ways. And, you know, you, you can go down the list. Yeah. But she would not have appointed three conservative judges. No. That would no. not have happened. You know, she wouldn't be putting in these types. She wouldn't be making policy. I will say this. She, she, she's a policy wonk. You know, which policy wonk is like she loves making policy. Yeah. She loves uh, legislating. That that was one of the, the the best things about her. You know, maybe one of the only good things about her. But that's what worked. Trump. He doesn't give. He oh, doesn't, yeah. know he doesn't know anything about policy making no, at all. No. And you had people that he surrounded himself with who love something like that because he'll just rubber stamp everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. Really, Clinton. That's not the case. And so one of the biggest mistakes, one of the, you know, one of the great tragedies of the, of the 2010s was, was this election. This was a bigger deal. Because, again, oh, yeah. one of the things that people always highlight, it's like, like oh, it's, it's going to be the same no matter what. Yeah. The, one of the greatest powers of the presidency is able to nominate Supreme Court justices. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that is so messed up about that is that they stay in there for life. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they yeah. stay in there for life. And you can go as young as you want to. Yeah, and, and that's and, what he and, did. And, yeah. and Trump nominated, he, he brought in young people. He did. Yep. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And they're going to be there for decades. Mm-hmm. And, you know, listen, it's not just one-sided. I know it's, it's easy for us, and maybe everyone to blame, blame the Republicans, blame conservatives, uh, po- policymakers. There's a lot of blame. Obviously, we just said, uh, I'm glad you brought this up, Martin, about the apathetic and complacent uh, liberal voting block. Mm-hmm. I mean, that has always been a huge... One of the things I want to tell, tell you right now, one of the things I admire about conservatives and Republicans, they stay mad. They, they do. stay yeah. mad they and do. passionate yeah. they forever. They do. So much has happened because the Tea Party sprouted up. Yep. And their, first, their whole thing was going back and Obama's not even a, a, a citizen, and that got yep. blown off. You guys are crazy. Mm-hmm. And so they were like, okay, they got defeated, but they never went away. Nope. And, they and, still there. and while, the, <laughs> while the eye wasn't on them, they got stronger. Mm-hmm. And their whole anti-abortion p- position yeah. got stronger. Because they, they initially said, like, oh, we don't really care about that so much. Liars. Yeah, right. yeah. No, they, they were biding their time. They, mm-hmm. yeah. These people were biding their time for decades. Yes. And they were looking at certain people, too, knowing, like, once they're gone, we'll have a greater foothold. Yep. And I'm sorry, listen, I know everyone loves the memer. Everyone loves to buy her merchandise and everything like that. But this is, this is a part of her legacy forever, and it's a huge mistake. But Ruth Bader Ginsburg, yeah. the fact that she didn't retire and I'm, people asked her. Yeah. Barack Obama asked her mm-hmm. back in 2014 before he lost mm-hmm. the, the Senate and the House said, yeah. you need to retire. And she right. said, no. no. She yeah. said, no. She's yeah. like, don't worry. Hillary Clinton's going to win. Yeah. I'm going to get in with uh, nominee of Supreme Court. It's almost like she was smelling her own, you know, mm-hmm. herself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, well, Trump was elected. Yeah. And then she passed away, and she knew, and she had rampant health issues. Mm-hmm. You know, I know people were busy memeing her and making documentaries about yeah, her, cementing yeah, her legacy beforehand. Yeah. And so there's some blame of this on her as well. Yeah. This is a huge deal. Even despite all of her decisions, even though she was for Roe v. Uh, v. Wade, this is still a result. Yeah. You could have had another liberal justice in there. Yeah. Everyone thinks that other people are like them. Yes. And if you are a good person, mm-hmm. you, you have an optimistic view of other right. people. You think yeah. other people are good and they will do the right thing Mm -hmm. right and what we have seen is that that is not the case not true that's i think been the the biggest i think reminder over the last couple of days too is that like i think uh especially like a lot of the uh, folks who are like in their you know younger years like teens early 20s like you're starting to kind of get out into the world and i think we've been sort of conditioned i think a lot through media and uh things like that where you know, if you work hard and you do the right things, life is going to work out like for you. Like it's going to be aces. And we, today, uh, Friday was a reminder: not always. And yeah. sometimes life sucks. Oh and yeah. And that the world can be very cruel, and the villains sometimes can win. Mm-hmm. And like, even kind of even think, when you think about Trump and his legacy, his legacy, like for the most part, is going to go down as one of like uh, you know politics' biggest mistakes, and like did such detrimental damage uh, to this country. But at the end of the day, he's still going to be a multi, multi millionaire to billionaire, depending on I don't uh, what is that which which is. lie he's telling. Yeah, whichever yeah, exactly. yeah. way his wealth is. Yeah. Like he's walking away from this clean. Like he's not he's not going to ever face the inside of a jail cell, despite all the the crimes he committed, all the lies, perjury, all the things he's done. 
the worst thing's happened is his legacy, and he's not even really going to care. Cause we every, grow up on a diet of fiction where the bad right. guys always lose. And that is not yeah. And that is not life. Yeah, yeah. no, and it's not. To, Friday was a reminder of that, is, uh, of that too. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's unfortunately, the, potentially the beginning of more things like this happening. And it's it's a hard pill to swallow. And you start to see the world for what it really is. And sometimes yeah. it makes you appreciate um, the kindness and generosity and love from others like that much more so when you realize just how cold the world can be yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i know everyone like they 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 believe that when you have these very high standards of the individuals that you want to vote for you want to vote for the bernie sanders bernie sanders not gonna become president chad he's not gonna be permanent that's that that's it's not gonna happen i know you would want someone like that who is very morally upstanding who has a squeaky clean record and everything like that but there are certain things that are just not gonna happen Sometimes you just got to vote for the you got to vote for the person that you know is going to benefit you the most. That's what it comes down to. The, those those people who look at their like they they could be shitty. You cannot like them personally, but look at what they voted for in the past. Look at their past poly, policy making decisions, the kind con- of legislation they they've created. Those things you got to look at. Yeah. I mean, you man, know? I would love to contradict you, but that is the winning strategy that Republicans have. Yep. So many of them hate Trump and they think he's mm-hmm. he's yep. awful. Mm-hmm. But Made that bad. He's effective. But he's effective. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. He has brought the, the the crazy rabid audience yeah. who will vote yeah right. yeah that's and that's, that's the thing because I have some people in the chat saying don't be a, don't be a, I'm not being I'm not even being pessimistic I'm being realistic I'm not yeah. saying oh it's all for not no I'm no, saying no no, no. you just, need just, to get just, involved just, just look realistically at yes. what is working and what is not working yes right. exactly that that's the thing so I know you 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 want the Beto O'Rourke's that like they're gonna be the president of everybody it's like that's not gonna happen. well all right I I won't even go that far with all you. Right. I won't. I won't go that far with you. It could happen. Yeah. It's just going to take people to go. Gonna hey, time. I'm going to not look at TikTok, and I'm going to actually yes. focused on yes. on my life and politics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. No. That, fair point. And that's one thing that I think that the Trump presidency did do is that it woke a lot of people up. Like I like I still remember because I was living back here in San Antonio and going to bed the night of the election, and Hillary was up a little bit. I was like, all right, we're fine. And went to bed. Woke up the next morning. Checked my phone. I was like. Is this the onion? What do you yeah, mean? What do yeah, you Trump want? Yeah, no, it's yeah, gonna be yeah. right. And then going to work, and like half of my coworkers are like, "This is the dawn of the next American, you know, Renaissance. We're all uh, all bored." And then there's the other half of us who are like, "This is the apocalypse, right? It's gonna start raining blood and frogs, right? We're, yeah. we're all screwed." I wanted to cover one more thing because then there's a, you know, let's see with abortion that's going back to the states, and you're gonna have states that are gonna protect it, others want though that are are not. Like, I think there's already 18 states where it's going to be made illegal. Like trigger laws. Yeah, sure. ex- exactly. I mean, so, or so it's going to be put in place in 30 they days. They crippled it so much sure. that this yeah. is just a formality as right. far as I see it. Yeah, and that's and that's the, because the, there's the ramifications uh, of it. You know, the, you know, certainly for poor communities or poor people access to these kind of, you know, healthcare options. Now you're going to have risk of people trying to pour, I mean, people have said self-abortion. So like, you know, yeah. the mortality rate's going to rise, you sure. know, for, for people. There, there's a lot. They don't care. They, no, exactly. Yeah. There's also some other things I want to bring up as well. And that is some stuff that uh, Clarence Thomas has uh, also said that has uh, concerned uh, people. And um, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas uh, on Friday said, Landmark high court rulings that establish gay rights and contraception rights should be reconsidered now that the federal right to abortion has been revoked. Thomas wrote that those rulings were demonstrably erroneous decisions. Cases he mentioned are Griswold versus Connecticut, 65 ruling in which the Supreme Court said married couples have the right to obtain contraceptives. Lawrence v. Texas, which 2003 established the right to engage in private sexual acts. In 2015 ruling, uh, Obgerfell v. Hodges, which said there is a, a right to same-sex marriage. Thomas' recommendation to reconsider the trio decisions does not have this force of legal precedent, nor does it compel his colleagues in the Supreme Court to take uh, the action he suggested, but... It is an implicit invitation to conservative lawmakers in various states to pass legislation like this. So eventually, to get it back to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, funny enough, because everyone was saying, like, all these other big landmark decisions that he brought up, everything would do with gay rights and contraceptives, the one that he didn't bring up, and a lot of people were noticing this, was... uh, Interracial marriage. Was interracial (laughs) marriage, which was loving, I think, the Virginia. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because he's married to a white woman yes yes and he's and but he's doing what he knows won't affect him of yeah. course. that's what it is even though it's like that is that could be along of all these other ones so uh-huh. again showing that he's a hypocrite oh yeah, yeah. And so no, no he's he's been a piece of shit from day one yeah but when you hear this do you still buy into the narrative that america is the greatest country in the world because right at this point it sounds like i don't know yeah. afghanistan might not be so bad right now <laughs> seriously yeah. it's it's, uh, yeah, you go, hey, this country, you are allowed, we have freedom of religion, and you do. 
You can practice whatever religion yep. without so. going to jail. I mean, you might be harassed, though. But, yeah. but, it is, but, it's, but it's not equity. <laughs> no, no, it's not. And, it, and yeah. it's certainly uh, the whole separation of church and state has been eroded yeah. at this and point. During the Trump, Trump administration, especially for when it comes to making donations. Even things. recently, right. there's been new things that have come mm-hmm, up this, mm-hmm. just this week. Oh, really? Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just this week. Uh, new erosions of separation of church and state. So, uh, yeah, I mean, look, okay, Afghanistan might be extreme, but yeah. there is no reason for you to not look into living in another country. I mean, a great mass exodus would, oh. would, would probably be the best thing that could happen to this country. I am interested to see, because, you know, I mean, what's going to happen with all these, these these states that are putting these laws into place? Are you going to see that people leaving these red states? Because we, we've seen it's, it's interesting. We've seen the opposite recently, where we have people from California, New York, leaving in droves because the taxing is horrible. Yeah. And they're going to places like Texas, like Florida, mm-hmm. although some other blue states yeah. like Colorado. People are definitely, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. m- mostly like, you know, the, you know, the southwest, a lot mm-hmm. in the southwest, maybe in the southeast. Mm-hmm. But it'd be very interesting to see if the UV sees something like an exodus, as you're describing, yeah. from these red states, for people that are concerned about their contraceptives and I can't speak to other red states. Yeah. It, it won't happen in Texas because Texas is one of the biggest economies in the world. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's like, it's like, just it's like, like bigger than nine. Russia. <laughs> yeah, like number nine. Yeah. Um, and it's so business friendly. Yep. And yeah. people have spent their whole lives here being taught to chase money. Money, money is what they praise. Mm-hmm. Uh, if a movie comes out and you think it's a wonderful movie, but you're down because, oh, it didn't earn that much money. None of that comes to you anyway. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. but but that's what that's what you praise. Uh, Tyler Perry. Well, he makes shit, but he's a great businessman, and that means what right. to to you or anyone? Uh, so yeah, these businesses that they can make money, and Texas is always going to be business friendly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that that that's I don't see a big exodus. Yeah. From here. Yeah. No, I don't now, think so. Other either. places. Maybe I can't speak to that. Alabama or something like that. Yeah, you know, we'll see. Um, but you know, just to I, I mean, I, what would be would be a great thing hmm. would to have a, a bunch of people or the government just clean up Mexico if there was some way to get rid of the cartels and make that a nice place. Look. <laughs> I know, no, I know, I know, I know, I know. You'd I know. Have, you'd it's have it's to rubber magic, rubber, rubber magic lamp or yeah, pull the yeah. monkey's paw, but. If that could happen, that would be a great place for everybody to just immigrate to. I was actually, I don't know, I, was, I think it was, maybe it was a previous, my own streams. I mentioned New Zealand. New Zealand yeah. sounds nice. Oh, <laughs> they, yeah, they're, they're a closed system. They're not, they're not looking to have people. Oh, they're like, like yeah. Here's yeah. that what it is. All right, fair enough. Um, but yeah, just to, just to wrap this up, I just wanted to talk about this. I didn't want to, you know, just, you know, go, ah, craziness. But I just want to show, like, people how this happened. Yeah, oh yeah. That this was oh yeah. not it's been in the works suddenly. For a while. It's yeah. in the works for decades. And, the very and, and don't act like you haven't heard any yes. of what we're saying. Because mm-hmm. it's been yeah. told to you, you probably just kind of blew it off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's the apathy and the complacency which we talked about, which affects a lot of liberal leaning people. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. that we do. We think we elected Barack Obama, therefore everything's gonna be great. Hope and change. Oh, we're and a post racial yeah. American, everything's good. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people relaxed. Yeah. And and that's that's been a big issue. So I just wanted to show you the history of this why this happened, why you should elect people that support policies that are good for you. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, maybe they're, maybe, you know, they're not as handsome or pretty or they don't have a, a shit ton of Instagram followers, but it's like, at the end of the day, you gotta look at what they what they've proposed in, in the past and what they've what they've brought to the table in terms of legislation. That's what that's what's very important. And people they keep forgetting that. And and you're, and you're making the easy choice. So um, just let people like. know. We like the easy choice as a country. Yeah, yeah. And oh, yeah. I think that's sort of the next thing you do is like, if you're angry, if you're mad, which you should be, the next step to your, I think to your point is you need to do something. Like it can't just be yeah. a post. It's uh, raise money for uh, for organizations. It is even just being there for uh, friends, family who are being affected by this and listen to them and just be, be like an advocate and a shoulder to cry on for right now. But then you got to go out there and figure out how you can actually help. Um, mm-hmm. And that's hard because that means you have to disrupt your day. You're going to have to disrupt your life to do something to actually start to really make a change. If nothing else, yeah. to, uh, to your point, vote. For the love of Christ, go out and vote. Yeah. And I, we have we have people in the chat and we're you know disagreeing, which is fine. You can disagree. Yeah. I'm di- this this is how we feel. Yeah. I think that's you know totally well, who, fine. Who disagrees? I'm because I, I don't feel like I say anything. I I, sure. I don't I don't you know people are saying like oh like you know you shouldn't say that about Obama. I'm like I can say what I want to say about Obama and the decisions that that he's made and the lack of action on certain things. You know, oh, okay. so I don't know. I mean, yeah. people are going to get mad no matter what we say. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. I, but again, but yeah, no, no. By all means, vote in every election. 
Yeah. But also look at maybe being the politician that you yep. want to see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if you're young, uh, you have a clean slate. When I was when we did our show in New York and I was traveling with uh, Christian Torres, he was like, "Man, I feel like you should run for office." Mm -hmm. And I was like. You know what, with the history of just things we've said on this show, <laughs> somebody would just pull up old broadcasts. Just and, tonight. <laughs> oh, here's where you said the N word and you said the R word. And I was like, yeah, that's all it takes to take somebody down now. Don't be that. Don't, don't be somebody who's just quick to jump on somebody about an old tweet. Oh, yeah. That's the you, other thing, you could be too. losing out on a huge talent. Yeah. I mean, everyone has said something that is uh, that they either regret or they don't believe in anymore or yeah. it's like whatever. It's not politically correct. We've all done it, chap. Yep. I've done it. Martin's done it. Vanny's done it. Corey's done it. You've done it. Okay, yeah. so vote for people that you know are going to be supportive of what you strive to put out there for people. So that's just my opinion.